Neat Nation. Happy Monday. Yeah, if you're watching this on Monday. Otherwise, happy whatever day it is. I hope you're ready to get geeky. Not freaky. Not that I'm against getting freaky in the proper context. But specifically, we're going to geek out a little bit today. So we talk about this whiskey. Midwinter Night's Dram. It's from High West Distillery. I want to say High Noon because Brian and I are always talking about High Noons. Uh, if you're a fan of the Droopy Whiskey channel and you're just a general member of Nation, you've probably been on our Thursday night live streams <clears throat> where you've heard us talk about our deep affection for High Noon Sun Sips. It's delicious. Fantastic. Not whiskey at all. Um, does have vodka in it and vodka serves its purpose. Is it great? No. But it's got its place. We're not talking about vodka tonight. What we are talking about is a very highly sought after whiskey. And this is the first one that I've gotten, had the opportunity to buy in probably four or five years. Um, it's solid in short, but we're going to break this down. We're going to talk about it. And then we're going to talk about, well, if you can't get it, what are some decent alternatives? Is this better um, of a release, say, than maybe Blackens Will It release, which was rye whiskey finished in Madeira. This high noon, high west, good grief, this is going to be rough. High west is rye whiskey finished in port casks. Specifically, it's French oak with port influence. That's where we'll start our journey here as we break down high west, <laughs> midwinter night stram. Specifically, this is Act 9, Scene 1. So the first bottling run of the ninth edition of Midwinter Night's Dram. So Midwinter Night's Dram, specifically, technically, is High West's Rendezvous Rye, which is their... There's, there's the double rye, and then there's the Rendezvous Rye. So it's Rendezvous Rye, finished in... Or finished with port influence. We're going to... It's important that we kind of clarify that because I'm not really sure how they bring the port into this and there are different ways you can finish a product. First let's talk about Rendezvous Rye. Rendezvous Rye is a blend of four to seven ish year old rye whiskeys. It seems like it's probably seven year old MGP. It's a 95.5 rye mash bill that they use in Rendezvous Rye and then they're probably using four year old ish of their own distillate which is like an 80% rye mash bill pretty sure. And that's, it's fine. It's just a fine rye. It's good. It's not great. Um, Rendezvous rye used to use a lot older whiskey in it. It used to be a blend of what was likely higher aged MGP rye with higher aged Barton rye, like a blend of six to 16 year old ryes. It's not that old anymore. So if you're like looking for a good rye, Rendezvous rye is probably fine. Like, it, like again, it's probably good, but it's probably more expensive then I would recommend if you're buying the most recent editions of Rendezvous Rye. But then comes the port influencing. They bring to the party. Um, so the specs on this, per the press release, are that the whiskey, the Rendezvous Rye, goes into a cask, a French oak cask, that has, or French oak casks, I should say, because it's a, it's a batch of barrels, it's not a single barrel, that were used to age uh, tawny port and ruby port. So a couple different kinds of port. Um, what I learned about port casks recently from Nicholas Brady Moss, Dancing Goat, uh, Master Distiller, just total boss, boss, um, was that a lot of the casks that are labeled as port casks that are used for aging, both Scotch and American whiskeys, didn't actually like age port. They're casks that are seasoned with port. Port is added to the casks specifically so that they can then be used to age Scotch or American whiskey. Interesting, right? Yeah. That probably just means that there's not the level of oak saturation with the port as there would be if the port had spent eons, years aging in those casks. Now, does that make the end product of Midwinter Night's Dram or, say, uh, port-finished scotch, like Quinta Rubin, um, Glenmorangie, like 14-year scotch? Does that make those products worse? I actually have no idea. 
and I think I'd have to taste the difference between like a official port cask and a port condition cask. Either way, we don't know what this one is. We just know it's French oak, and it's French oak that had tawny port and ruby port in individual casks at certain times. Rendezvous rye goes into those barrels. It's eventually dumped, blended into the 2021 edition of Midwinter Night Stram. The marketing behind this is, yeah, you should drink this on a on a winter's night when it's cold when the snow's piling up when the fire's crackling you want something both sweet and spicy you want it to deliver um pe- pepper and um you want it to have a warming sensation whereas you also want the comfort of red fruits and i'm generally here for that profile i'm down for it so let's give it a little tasty taste now and first one caveat I've been sick. Not COVID. I took two COVID tests. I took one on our live stream last Thursday night. Not a lot of fun. I'm not a big fan of the nasal probe. But I didn't have COVID. But my tasting was completely shot on Thursday when we did the live. I'm also coughing a lot as I record this. I'm cutting out the coughs so you don't have to live through that. That said, my palate's not back to a hundo P yet. It's better. I can smell and I can taste. So I'm pleased for that. But not at 100%. That said, let's see what we get out of this anyway. The whininess, the port, is evident on the palate right away. You're just confronted with a rush of, like, grape gushers, which is a great tasting note, for sure. With a lemony citrus, with some juniper, you get, like, lighter rye notes. Not, like, rich, candy ginger. You don't get oak at all. You just get... All kind of fruits, from citrus to strawberries to cherries to grapes to grape candy and grape soda. That's the deep, the underbelly, and then the highs are this spicy juniper, big black pepper, um, and then citrus. It doesn't smell like something where you go, oh, this is going to be world class. It's going to blow me away. It's a fun nasal journey. And I'm excited by it, but it's not conveying like an overall depth that I would look for out of a whiskey that I would put, you know, in center stage here. Get some licorice, some anise. Let's get in on the palate of this thing. I mean, the nose is nice. The nose is is Christmas candy. It really is, which I think is what they're going for. So nailed it. The palate reminds me of like a spiced wine, like a spiced Christmas wine. Don't know if any of you have had this, but um, being in Wisconsin, high ger- like German population, apparently Germans love spiced wine. But this is like the whiskey version of that. Whereas in a spiced wine, you start with this wine base, you warm it. It's like a Cabernet type red wine, thick. Then you layer in some lemon slices, maybe some candied uh, orange peel, something like that. <clears throat> Then you're adding star anise and cinnamon. And all of those notes are present on the palate here. It's like the whiskey version of that German spice wine. Which is a great thing. I am not hating on that. I'm appreciating that. Because I love a good holiday pour. Which Midwinter Night's Dram may be the perfect holiday pour. It's viscosity. um, Pure viscosity. (laughs) Like syrup. It's very syrupy. The port influence is so high. It's very porty. That whiny, grapey, uh, gushers, candy uh, dominates the palate for sure. But then you're left um, mouthfeel-wise with a touch of black pepper and a lot of citrus. Maybe a touch of ginger in there. Really nice stuff. Nothing to hate on with this whiskey. It's delicious. It's very, very delicious. It's more port forward than I think you would expect out of a whiskey. Like if I was blind tasting this, I think I would really struggle to nail it as a whiskey. The rye notes are present and you're left with it, but it's so sweet and candy and red fruit up front that I go like, maybe this is a cognac or something. Like like something from distilled grapes or distilled wine, like more in the brandy family because it's so whiny. That's that it's, it is fantastic. And the spiciness that the rye does lend to it 
is great. It doesn't have any oak really in it though, and I miss that. Like because it's a four to seven year old blend of rye, I wouldn't expect oaky influence, but I think it could add a lot. I think it could balance it out. I think it could add another layer to it. Um, that said, no shame in this game. It is a fantastic holiday whiskey. It's 98.6 proof, port finished, you know, five to six year old average rye. Um, it's highly sought after, and that's where we kind of have to get into talking about this a little bit more. Is is it worth it? I honestly don't know. It's if you're just going purely on its deliciousness, sure. At a hundred dollar MSRP. Um, it, it's probably worth it. I might go up to 130 or so, but I wouldn't go beyond that because, and here's the thing, is I think this is a replicable profile. By replicable, 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 <laughs> I think you can replicate it. I think you can take a high rye mash bill, like MGP style, 95.5 rye, and you can add port to it. So, Let's break that down for a minute. Let's say you had something. I would probably use something like this guy. These Willet Rise are high rye rise. They're not barely legal rise. And they're quite good for four years old. And let's say you had a rye like this, or, or maybe you could use New Riff uh, single barrel rye, which is a 95.5 uh, rye mash bill, or maybe the Senator, which is a six year old MGP rye, um, which is 95.5. You could take those rise, and if you had, say, some tawny port or ruby port or both, all you would have to do is add a little bit to the rye to accomplish a similar profile as the Midwinter Nights Dram. Because, I mean, you think about the aging, really, you put a mature whiskey in a barrel that held a wine or a cognac or something, and the wine or the cognac probably already extracted a decent amount of the oaky flavors from the barrel. What the whiskey is picking up when it goes in the barrel is just the residual fluid, primarily. Not just, I know somebody's going to bark up my tree, but it's primarily the residual spirit or wine that was in the cask that is being absorbed into the whiskey that then alters the whiskey's profile. So assuming that, the major impact on the rye after it went into the barrel was it absorbed port from the barrels well all you would have to do then to accomplish a similar profile is start with a similar base rye and add some port bada bing bada boom so i would take the willet and i would just add a little tawny port maybe a little ruby port um, until i achieved the same kind of fruitiness slash sweetness level of the Midwinter Night's Ram, or whatever I liked best. Really, I would do it probably to taste. I would do three or four batches with different increments, different ratios of whiskey to port, until I was like, yep, it's that one. And then I would go with that. You could do that and accomplish, I dare say, something that tastes at least equal to this, as delicious as it is. And it is delicious. It is. It's a phenomenal finished rye. It may be the best one of the year. But that's what we're going to find out now as we bring in the blackened Willet release, which I've already pre-poured a little of. So we're going to say, we're going to do a little exercise now. What's the best finished rye in 2021, according to Drew P? We have here a port finished rye whiskey coming in just below 100 proof. We have here a Madeira finished rye whiskey coming in at almost 110 proof, so a little bit of a proof differential here. But having tasted these whiskeys before, there's a similarity to them in that they're both wine finished, um, but then there is a pretty notable difference as well. I've already talked about the fruit forwardness of the Midwinter Nights Dram. It's dominant in the overall profile of the quote-unquote whiskey. When we come over here to the Black and Willet, on the nose, there's something very evident um, as a difference, is this is more whiskey forward. I get an oak on the nose. I'm like, oh, yep, this was aged in American oak. I get that charcoaliness, which I dig. And then it's also spicier up front. The, it seems like it's leading with classic Kentucky rye, high Kentucky rye. And then the underpinning is the finishing. It's the Madeira. It's like black pepper. I get some pine. I get oak. 
I get some citrus, but then I get this really soft, almost strawberry fruit leather kind of vibe that kind of rounds it out. And that definitely holds up on the palate as well. It reads more like a classic rye. It's leading with spice. It's leading with these sort of green notes. You get a touch of mint in there as well. And then, to kind of complete the picture, almost as a different color, if we're tasting with color, you get the Madeira, the sweet, more subtle wine. A lighter, right? Madeira is much lighter than a port, but a much lighter kind of influencing on the Willet. To me, this is a whiskey lover's finished whiskey. Whereas this one is, well, everybody's going to love this. It's just sweet and syrupy and delicious. This one is leading more with spice and oak and then is softened maybe just a smidge with a Madeira, which adds a layer of complexity that's really, really, really nice. This one is way more complex than this one. They're both friggin' delicious. In terms of my desired profile, I think I might go with the Black and Willet. I probably would. But I'm going to crush both of them this holiday season, for sure. And when I'm wanting something a little sweeter, I'm going to go Winter, winter Night's Dram. Want something more classic? Gonna go. All right, y'all. That's it. I've had so many technical difficulties recording this, but I hope you enjoyed it. Before you go, though, I will call out. Ah, if you're looking for a rad barrel pick, sixty bucks right now. Sealbox.com. Link down in the show notes below. Password for this is the goat. This is a seven-year, hundred percent corn whiskey from MGP. Basically, MGP light whiskey that is then finished in toasted and charred Spanish oak, concocted by my good friends over at Dancing Goat Distillery and picked by yours truly, um, and Brian Beike at Abandoned Bourbon. So, if you want a good whiskey, great whiskey for 60 bucks, super complex, super unique, you've never had anything like this, you should do that. It's only gonna be available for a couple more days, then it's gone. Just trying to help you all out. I hope you all have a good Thanksgiving. It should be a good week. Enjoy your family, enjoy your friends. Keep the conversation edifying. Stay healthy, stay safe, and y'all keep it neat.